Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us uh, for today's session. My name is Firas, I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor in Redmond. Uh, before we start, there are a few things I'd like to go over. Please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We seek to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary and please remain professional and on topic. This session is recorded. It will be available on the Microsoft uh, Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I'll be sharing the link to the YouTube channel in the chat. I'll also be sharing some links to the Reactor Mina page. And I'll also be sharing a link to our survey uh, if you want to let us know how this event uh, went. Which brings us to our session today. This session will run for approximately one hour uh, with time for questions throughout. Um, our speaker for today is Armando Lacerda. He is an Azure platform architect. And I'm now going to pass this along to Armando. Thank you for us. Hello, everybody. Good morning. If you are connecting here from the US West Coast, good evening, good afternoon. If you are connecting from somewhere else in the world, and uh, welcome to our live session on um, uh, the trades of DevOps, the tools of the trades for Azure DevOps. And my PowerPoint is not flipping. Let me see. There we go. <laughs> DevOps tools of the trades. The, the, uh, uh, yeah, so my name again is Armando Lasorda. Thank you for us for introducing me. Um, I'm besides being a data engineer and a data architect, I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer and I am a Microsoft uh, MVP. Uh, trainer means I love to do this. What I'm I love to do this, uh, this thing I'm doing here right now, which be uh, meeting with you guys and uh, sharing some of uh, knowledge on the this particular topic today on DevOps. But I love being in a classroom. I love exchange ideas. So if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter uh, and keep the conversation going after this session, that will be great. I would love it. Uh, Facebook, I do have a presence there, but no technical stuff over there. It's just my personal things like riding my motorcycle or soon jumping from uh, uh, doing skydiving, jumping from an airplane. Uh, it's on my bucket list. I think I'm up for that in a few. In any case, before I do that, uh, we're going to go and uh, talk about DevOps and what is involved into DevOps and what are the tools we get from Microsoft um, and some other uh, Microsoft and some other companies on uh, on implementing DevOps on its multiple stages. This uh, particular session also has a, 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 a secondary goal, which is uh, motivating you, inviting you to go and explore the Microsoft Learn website. You know, this logo here on top of my head, <laughs> the Microsoft Le uh, Learn website. Um, if you're not aware yet, I've been doing these sessions here. This, I think this is my seventh session uh, uh, on this particular Build the Skill series. And the idea here is um, Microsoft has made all their learning materials available for free on the Microsoft Learn website. So uh, Microsoft has official classes. They still have the official classes. And when you go to an official class, you have a trainer that you can talk to and you have an environment that's been set up for you. So we have a lot of perks when you go to an actual classroom setting. But if you like to, uh, to do self-study, right, to, take, to study at your own pace, your own time, that the courseware material that Microsoft used to give uh, only in classrooms, now they made the whole thing available for free on this platform, Microsoft Learn. So um, I'm going to show you how to get there in a few. And I highly uh, uh, invite, uh, I highly suggest to you, um, you know, invite you to go and check it out. And um, one of the topics in there is this one, <laughs> Microsoft DevOps, uh, I mean, DevOps and the Microsoft tools around DevOps and services of, uh, around DevOps. So in this session today, and once again, my thing doesn't want to flip. Let's see if it flips now. There we go. And uh, so in this session today, our agenda will be uh, an overview, a, br a brief introduction, but, you know, a, a 10,000 feet overview of the process involved into, into DevOps and uh, how the CI CD process goes and how DevOps implements that one. Uh, DevOps is a very, very comprehensive uh, topic, right? It's a wide, really deep uh, into the elements you can do. There are multiple vendors doing a lot of things. 
So um, this introduction will be more into the general terms and how those things connect into the Microsoft platform, what Microsoft offers for those. So after the introduction, we go uh, review the story and see the tools that are involved in each one of those steps. Um, and this, uh, I plan to have some demos in there for you, show you some elements in there. And uh, at the very end, I'm going to uh, also going to see the service of every stage, of course. And at the very end, we're going to see uh, the links for you on the Microsoft Learn website and uh, on the GitHub repo for some workshops that you can uh, do on your own at your own pace. And Microsoft, again, like I said, they make the material available for you and also incorporated material from GitHub. Um, in case you're not aware, you know, GitHub is, is a company that's been around for a very long time. They host over 100 uh, million projects over there. Uh, some open, most of them are open source. Some of them are uh, pr uh, private to companies and they use GitHub as their uh, cloud repository. And Microsoft acquired GitHub a couple, a few years ago. And there is a, uh, there's an integration that's uh, uh, ongoing in between GitHub and Microsoft and all the connectors that are in there. So in this, uh, one of the things Microsoft has done already is integrating the GitHub uh, learning platform into the Microsoft learning platform. So for now, they kind of have links to each other. You, we commute in between all of them, uh, in between them, and you see that in a few. And if you have questions at any time, you can go ahead and shoot me questions. Um, uh, Faraz is uh, uh, looking, is monitoring the chat, the, the chat uh, window there. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and pop up the question there. Okay, so um, the whole the whole thing about DevOps, the the, the main idea surrounding DevOps, is uh, trying to fix in a very simplistic way, <laughs> is try to fix um, uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, an issue we used to have uh, at the beginning, since, since the com uh, beginning of computing, when we have developers that they create code on a particular environment, and when they get the code to run uh, in the, another environment, it can be either production or a client of theirs, and you know, deploying into multiple places. Uh, it got into those situations where it works on my end, on my computer, but doesn't work on your computer. This is one of the issues that Dev, you know, the, the idea of DevOps came around to trying to fix. The other issue is trying to create processes. Uh, so the code, uh, you know, the, the, the development cycle and the code can be uh, automated and can be uh, gated, right? It can be, you can, you have checkpoints, you have, uh, quality uh, controls, and if they fail, you don't move forward into the process of deploying and delivering something. So DevOps development and operations is the uh, is this blending of two uh, two areas of computing that used to be very apart. I, I'm a developer, do my development, do my code, and then give my code to you, and you know you do your thing to get it to work on your environment. And operations, that's like, you know, people create code and now I'm kind of trying to find a way to get it to work on my environment. So it's, the idea is to blend these two things. If you are, um, uh, if you are into uh, reading, um, like a, not a technical reading, it's sort of a romance, but it's a romance on uh, with the IT background, I highly recommend you taking a, uh, take a look on a book called The Phoenix Project. I want to get to the browser here. I, 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 I will give you a link. It's a very interesting book. I read it. I, I felt like I was part of the book. I was one of the guys that are in the book. <laughs> and um, the, uh, the authors, they go into this drama of getting uh, IT, companies, IT department working with development and get things to deploy uh, without much, much disruption. So the whole idea of DevOps to have this integration and make sure that the code goes from developers to uh, production environment with minimal disruption and with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, quality checks uh, along the way. So everything starts with the developer. So that's the idea, right? <clears throat> here uh, on this picture here, I place like some an icon here for a developer. The guy is using uh, his tools or her tools to imp uh, to code to do their code on their own computer. So usually on companies, they are working on their own laptops, on their own workstations. And um, 
you know, they learn their code in here, they implement their code here. This person more likely work uh, in a team, in a group. So everybody is working uh, uh, on their own portion of a unique system of one, one system, one major system. So this, this developer is working on one particular aspect of the system. This developer is working on another aspect of the system, the same for the first guy. And these three guys here, they, they, are, they have to get their code together and the code must work together. So there will be uh, some place where there is a repository where all this code will converge together. And this repository here, I already used the, the icon <laughs> that's a very common um, uh, standard repository standard we have nowadays, which is, which is the Git repository. Now, there are other options. So Git, uh, one thing to keep in mind is GitHub is one company, right? It's, again, acquired by Microsoft a few years ago. So it's one company. GitHub is a trademark, is a company. And Git is a protocol, it's a standard that was developed by Linus, uh, Linus, Linus Torvald long ago for developers to help do source control, right? To help manage source control um, and versioning and all of that. And it's open source. It's the good, the good thing about it. It's open source. It's not it, 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 because it's open source. People adopt it, so it's more multi-platform as well. Bottom line is, these guys here they are developing their code and uh, they are doing their tests on the portion of the code. They more likely rely on uh, code from the other developers, and um, some uh, they converge data into a Git repository. Right? This just the protocol, the, the, the repository, the Git. We see the tools in the field. <clears throat> For now, we are into the story. So they're all integrated in there. At some point, the code they have created, they, they come into, they, they, they run their own tests, they, they check the things at their own end. At some point, they say, hey, this thing is good to go. Um, we want to move forward and get this thing uh, into the process to get to production, right? You get a new feature, get a new release, and more, nowadays, most companies, they adopt this, uh, this process uh, called Agile, which, um, which um, push, uh, core, uh, organizes the process. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to choose my words in here. The, the Agile process tries to get uh, things uh, de uh, deployed as fast as possible. So you, you, don't, uh, you don't wait for major uh, milestones to get like a full product out. You just release based on features and you get the, the fruits, um, the low hanging fruits and you push out uh, the things that are available for you, uh, available or develop and stable as much as, as soon as possible. So, you, you know, Agile is one of the processes that uh, companies use to get things done uh, and uh, rolled out to production quicker in a short uh, in short sprints. So when that is done, when development, you know, the whole team has pushed uh, that data, that code in there and saying that the code is good for uh, for uh, production, of course, we're not going to go straight into production, right? We first want to run some tests. When uh, they, the developers, they have run their own tests, but we want to have other people to go ahead and test those things to see uh, from their perspective, non-technical people more likely, um, you know, a group of users that are uh, elected to be testers on the, the feature that's coming in is about to roll out. Uh, we want to have those guys to test the, the features. So we have this environment, this, this second environment called the test environment. And part of the DevOps process is exactly this isolation of environment. There is an environment here where developers do their things. And uh, I'm a developer at heart. Uh, I'm a data engineer, like I mentioned, a data architect and a data engineer, depending on the project, which hat, which hat I'm using, I'm wearing on. Um, but uh, as a data engineer, I do coding, do a lot of coding for data transformation. So uh, developers here could be data engineers like me, can be data scientists, or can be uh, actual developers for applications, for mobile applications, for some uh, tiered uh, business logic or something like that. The bottom line is we developers, we have our environment that's usually messed up. <laughs> we, we, we do our messing here, but we get things done and we implement our code and we push our code for testing. One of the major elements when we get into testing here is that we uh, there is a separation of environment, meaning that I, as a developer, 
I am not uh, welcomed <laughs> into the test environment. Developers, stay away, right? You're not supposed to do anything in here. Testers, they would come into the testing environment and uh, they would check out the new release, right? The release that just came out from, from development and see if the release is good to go. Now, these tests, they can be of two, two ways, two, two kinds. Uh, mo uh, uh, most companies, they do, uh, 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 especially if the application is uh, user facing, is facing the user. Um, uh, Companies, develop, the developing departments, they would have real people coming here and checking it to see if that uh, new release, you know, the proposed new release is good to go. So, for instance, if you are in um, uh, data, in, into data, into data analysis, right, and you are using Power BI, Power BI does support these things. You have a de development uh, stage into Power BI. Just to talk about a tool that's not development, but it's kind of a popular nowadays. So we have a development environment in Power BI, and within Power BI, you have a test environment where you would have uh, elected the users to come and check the reports and the numbers to see if the new release of the reports uh, is trustworthy, right? If the numbers are okay, if it's functional. So in here, you would have human beings uh, uh, testing what came out from development. Now, if you are into data engineering, for instance, <clears throat> or uh, if you're into business logic where you don't have a uh, user interface, uh, usually what you have in here are uh, bots, uh, short for robots. <laughs> you have bots, a piece of software doing unit tests uh, on, uh, on, uh, on your APIs to see if the APIs re uh, responds, if it doesn't break, and if the uh, results of a, an API call is the expected result, right? When you call the API, you get the you get the information you're expecting back from that from that call. So it can be of two kinds, right? It can be either automated through bots, or it can be uh, gated by uh, gated and tested by human beings, and they will do their uh, good uh, good to go, you know, the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And when that is done, when test is uh, is finished is completed you get production. So when you get into production, you have yet another challenge in here because you have an environment that is already running, right? Like I have a website, I do online uh, online trading, for instance, I you know I sell products online. So if a new feature is coming in, is replacing something that's running, there will be uh, a, a flip over, right? Something that needs to be replaced by something new. So when I do this flip over, w the question is, will I have downtime? You know, when I do this flipping here, <clears throat> when I do this flipping here, uh, what will happen to my customers? You know, if they are in the middle of buying something on my uh, on my website, and and when they click buy, and it, it, right in between they uh, fill up their carts and click the you know buy or close the checkout. I replace something in the system and then they, their experience gets disrupted and then they decide not to fill up the card again and they go away and I have lost revenue. So we don't want to have that, right? We definitely don't want to have that. So in here in the production stage, we do also need tools into the DevOps process to uh, make the uh, release of new features that have been tested and approved make the release of new features as smooth as possible. And uh, there will be tools for that. Actually, there will be uh, more techniques than tools uh, into this one here that will be supported by the services behind all of that. So in a nutshell, oops, the test flew over, over there. <laughs> Let me remove that test there just quick. Got a, plop, a problemo on my uh, slide deck. Let's see if that fixed it. Back in here. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> um, okay. Here. There we go. So that is the overall idea of, of DevOps, right? All the way from development through test and uh, uh, automated or manual test, and then release into production. This is the whole idea of DevOps. And uh, there are some acronyms that go around in here. These stages, they have uh, uh, their uh, uh, this process also uh, um, referred to as the CI 
uh, CD process. And just for your benefit, uh, for you to match when, when people talk about DevOps, when people talk about CI CD, what this thing means. Uh, again, DevOps is larger than CI CD. There are more elements into DevOps, but the, it, it, it encompasses uh, CI CD as well. So for your benefit, um, just for you to know, when you say CI CD, the CD acronym of it <laughs> has two meanings, right? Uh, continuous integration, the CI, is the developer side of this. Remember, there is, there, I have only one guy here right now, but there is a team going on in here, and that team is interacting. A lot of people are developing distinct aspects of the system, and they are integrating all the time, meaning they develop something and they push to the main repo, right, the, the common repo there. And if they start developing something else, they make a copy of the repo, they do whatever they want to do, and they push it back uh, to the repo. So this is co a continuous integration of new features that have been created by the developers, tested individually by the developers, push back to uh, the main repository so other people can get the fresh copy of those, of those things. And as they develop, they kind of testing what each other is doing as well. So that goes into the uh, uh, CI um, aspect of this. The CD part of this, like I said, is two-folded, right? One is the continuous delivery, meaning when something here uh, is flagged like green, like it's good to go from the developers. So we do a delivery as soon as possible of that feature into testing so it can be tested. And when it's flagged as green, as a good to go into tested, we want to get that into production as soon as possible so that get into production is referred to as continuous deployment. So we have these three, uh, these three stages there. Um, in the, you see this, a lot of people are kind of unaware, and if you're new to the, uh, to, to the development context and the operations of getting the code into production, um, if you're new to this, you probably haven't uh, haven't seen that much. It's kind of not not that in depth um, behind the this, uh, behind the curtains and behind this backstage kind of view things, but we have seen this everywhere uh, when it, when it comes to compute. Uh, in the past, you uh, actually nowadays you can still see some software that they have version numbers, right? You have you know application version 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. We're gonna see some here. GitHub is kind of that. So you have applications that has these version numbers. But for the most part, especially on mobile devices, there were, there were uh, you know, that particular uh, area of, uh, of software development and delivery uh, it was the first one to adopt these techniques when you get into iPads and you know, cell phones, iPhone, uh, you know, Galaxy, whatever it is. Uh, you get an application in there and you keep using the application. You don't see it. But that application, when there is an update uh, from the vendor, usually gets to you right away and, and you don't even feel it. For, for them, internally, there is a version into it. You see the version in there. But as an end user here uh, uh, inter uh, interacting with the application, you really don't see that happening. You know, we just open the application, the application is there. There was an update to the application and it didn't even notice. Only when it's a major application usually. Like if you do an iPad, sometimes you get in there, there is a new iOS version release because it's a major thing, right? It's the operational thing, the operational system of the device. But for the applications itself, for the most part, you don't see this because like, like the name suggests, this is a continuous deployment. Every time we get something new, it's tested, it's stable, we push it out. Uh, it happens to Windows. Windows has adopted that. So, like, it, it has been Windows 10 for, what, seven years? Eight years? I don't quite remember. Around that, it was Windows 10 all along. It was Windows 10. But every uh, every week, there was something new into Windows, some new feature coming to Windows, some patching coming to Windows. And we we just didn't see that. You know, it's just the computer. It was the uh, <laughs> the famous Patch Tuesdays and also the upgrades that come up uh, with the patches. So uh, from time to time, there was a reboot that was necessary, good to go. Same thing for uh, Linux and Mac OS, right? You get this, when there is a major release, now we have Windows 11, then we have all the, the party, you know, all the, the, the spotlights, uh, usually kind of a marketing thing, but uh, with major new, uh, new features into the product. And once it, the major new uh, the major new feature comes out, you get into the continuous deployment process again. 
So it, the, the computing environment, right, the, the, the computer market and software development has been working like this for a very long time now and is well adopted, well stabled. And the goal from now, from this point on, is to see what tools do I use in each one of these stages and how uh, who use them and how they get to work for me, right? So let's uh, take a look on the actual tools of the trade. So this is the trade. <laughs> all, of the, all of this story up to this point is the actual trade. Now let's take a look at the tools, right? The tools that will help us out on each one of these stages. Uh, what do I have here? Yeah, so CI, CD but usually uh, just referred to one CD, not two CDs. All right, so that was that. Well, let's stay here. I've got to GitHub Actions in a few. So at this, at this point in here, at this particular stage, the tools of the trades in here are the tools to help the developers to do their code, like we have just discussed. So let me go ahead and switch, get myself down here uh, at the bottom here. And uh, let me switch here to Visual Studio Code just quick. So, and let me zoom in here so you guys can see. Oh, there's a question there. When you are ready to deploy, does it pause environment? Yes, that's a great question, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle Norton. Uh, thank you for the question. The goal is not uh, the goal is not to have downtime, right? When, uh, in your question, you mentioned you know that there will be a pause on the system. Uh, the, of course, you will have a pause at some point, right? Because, you know, you, 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 there is a software going on, there is an application going on, you have to stop it and start a new one. So at some point, there will be a, a downtime. Now, do we have techniques to either shorten this downtime or make it not perceivable to the people, uh, uh, to the people using our application or our, um, you know, to the users using our application? And the answer is yes, there are techniques you can use uh, to, to prevent downtime. Uh, it all depends on the application you are deploying. So uh, one of the techniques, for instance, if you are doing websites, right? You have, like I said, you, uh, you're trading goods on a, on a web, you have an e-commerce presence, and you have a new feature on your e-commerce website, and you want to release that new feature. What you can do, one of the techniques you can use, what they call the green and yellow, is you have two environments. One is um, on pause all the time, and the other one is the one that's in production, everybody's hitting on. And uh, when you release something new, you release to the environment that is down at the moment, you put that environment up, and when the environment is up, you redirect the users to the new environment, you know, or to the uh, uh, load balancer or something. You redirect to the new one. And when there is nobody else using the old one, you put that one down. So you don't have downtime when you do this. And you have a moment when things are kind of a hybrid. Some users may have the previous experience. Some users are already uh, 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 hitting the new experience, the new features you have released. But the bottom line, you did implement a, a, an approach that would avoid downtime for the end users. Now, if you don't do that, your option is put this down, put the new one up, and there will be a downtime in between, so there will be that pause. Depending on the platform and what you are deploying, you may be able to adopt the green-blue uh, environment uh, technique. That's a technique, right? Very popular when we use Kubernetes, for instance. You see a lot of uh, tooling around that, and I'm gonna get, try to get that in a few. But um, but yeah, you may or may not have a pause depending on the the techniques you your team uh, will adopt, right, to release to production. So I hope that answered your question. All right, back in here. Uh, must you wait for the transactions in flight to? So if you do the the if you do the green yellow technique that I just mentioned, um, you you will do that, right? You never just stop the application uh, the application or have the uh, or queue up the user say wait out there until I finish my release, right? If you do the green uh, green and yellow new users new hits to your web, your website, we hit the new release that's already up and they are side by side at a point. And the other ones to finish the transactions that are going on. And when the transactions are committed, or if they are bought for a reason, 
um, when there is no more running transactions, you put that one down. When you get into databases, for instance, uh, if you if you're using, for instance, SQL Server, and you're planning a major release of SQL Server and a major update of SQL Server, Microsoft uh, just made available SQL Server 2012, and <laughs> it's in preview, it's not in production yet, so it's not GA yet, so don't put it in production. But when it comes to the time you have to put it in production, um, will you have downtime? You know, the transaction, I think you just mentioned, you know, do you have to wait for the transactions to finish from one server to get into the other server? That could be the case, that may not be the case, depending on the techniques you apply to do the back end uh, update. So it all depends on the server, on the server and services you are working on, where they are deployed, if in the cloud or on premise, and if you can use some particular techniques like the green yellow I just mentioned. All right. Good question again. Thank you. All right. So just to get the lineup thought here again, we are talking about, uh, I think I have my clicker here somewhere. Let me get my clicker. Is it here? Yeah. So uh, I was talking about the uh, developers, right? And the developers uh, develop, uh, creating code and get that code uh, into the repo. So what are the tools of the trade on the DevOps uh, approach right, for the whole pipeline on this particular stage here for the developers? For the most part, the basic tools they need is something that's integrated with a developer development environment. So there was a point in time in history when the big deal was the IDE, right? We have an integrated development environment where we have the source code editor integrated with the, the compiler and you do the whole thing together, you don't have to switch between environments. So that has been settled long, long ago. Nowadays, Microsoft offers two uh, IDE environments. Um, one, it's the traditional one called uh, Visual Studio. And I think the current version is 2022. So you use Visual Studio. I used to be a big Visual Studio user uh, as a developer. I used to do all my things in Visual Studio. But for a long while, yeah, five, six years or more, uh, Microsoft has released this uh, other um, flavor, I would say, I would call it another flavor of Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio called Visual Studio Code. And the big deal about Visual Studio Code is, uh, is multi-platform. Visual Studio works only on Windows environments. So if you are a Mac user, Linux user, you have to spin up a virtual machine to get Visual Studio working for you there on those Mac or Linux environments. But Visual Studio Code is multi-platform. It works on multiple environments. It's, you know, it's lightweight, lightweight and kind of, um, um, you know, it offers a different approach to development in the development cycle. It's the same idea, same integration. So here on the right side, for instance, I have a bunch of uh, integrated elements into my development environment. Like if I do Azure development, uh, I can download extensions from this uh, blade in here. And like, you know, I do Azure development. So are there anything to help me out with Azure development? And all of these things here, they got the check mark there already. Uh, they are already available for me. Uh, give me just one second, let me do, uh, enable the zoom in here feature. There we go. So let's try that again. So here, you see, I have this green marks already here, which means I have already downloaded this, uh, these tools. So if I want to do, you know, Azure databases, I have some integration here with Azure on this blade here that I just integrated. And I actually, I had already integrated there, right? So I, here I have my uh, resources from all my subscriptions and I can go and see how integrated it is. I'm developing my application, I'm looking to Azure and doing stuff in there. But when it comes to the actual develop, development of my code, uh, what I have in here is this, uh, um, uh, this feature. In, in the tool. And again, I'm doing Visual Studio Code here just as a, an example, right? Visual Studio itself does it. And there are a lot of other great tools from other vendors that do the same. The tool of the trade is the support for Git, this guy here, right? Support for, come on, what is it here? Is the support for source control for Git. And um, Git is the prevalent protocol or standard out there. Uh, GitHub me, being one of the services in the cloud that use this protocol. 
but there are some others. You can go ahead and look into others if you'd like. Um, one of the aspects that, let me go back to this slide deck here just quick. One of the aspects of Git that you need to understand, if I, let me see if the zooming works, it does. Perfect. One of the aspects of Git is the source code is kept in multiple places. Like the source code in here is kept both at the client, uh, I mean, at the developer's workstation and in a, in a repository someplace else, um, usually kind of a central place where people converge to, developers converge to, but it's just a copy like this one is a copy as well. It's just being elected as the copy that everybody converges to. So one of the things to keep in mind about Git on this uh, on, uh, as one of the tools of the trade is that uh, whatever Git is running, there is a full copy of the code, right, of the source code of the application that people are working or whatever content they are developing. Let's go back here. Yeah. Um, in order for, uh, for Git to work, you do need uh, the command. Oh, sorry, you do need the command line support for Git, which is this guy here. Git. You need that command line support for Git. And to get the command line support for Git, what you do is let me see here. This guy. Yes, I'll get to this guy here in a second. Let me use my mouse. One second, folks. I got. I need to bring this one here. This popped up on the wrong window. So let me get this guy here. As you can see, I have tons of windows open. <laughs> and uh, this one back in here. There you go. Zoom in. Thank you. And let's get a new one here. So this is the tool of the trade. Git, uh, let's see, download, Git. This is the support you're going to need uh, to get Git on uh, on your computer or the developer's computer or anything else, right? This is a free one. Again, it's one of the tools of the trade that you uh, may want to use uh, on the developers. And, and that's for the developer's workstation, right? That is for... Uh, the yellow square over there, right? Kind of the yellow <laughs> uh, square over there. When it gets to the centralized uh, repo where people will be storing their coding there, of course, it has to be from the same protocol, right? The same standard. And uh, you have to elect one of the online services to do that. You can have, uh, you can have this thing on premises. Um, if, if your company uh, is somewhat somehow regulated and your source code then must be on computers in the data center of the company, there are options to have the Git repo on local servers on the local data centers of the, uh, of the company. But for the most cases out there, we don't want to bother with infrastructure. We would rather use a service that's up in the cloud. Of course, one of the services I have, as I've been mentioned all along, is this guy here, is GitHub, which I'm already uh, uh, signed in, so he got into my account right my account right away. But this is the guy, right? GitHub here is the service. Let me see here if I sign off from this, I might be able. Let me get out of the way here just quick. Uh, if I sign off, is that sign off? There you go. There we go. That's the main page there for this. So GitHub uh, is, is your service. One of the thing, one of the things, one of the many things that GitHub offers is the uh, the ability to create a repo to get your coding there. So this is another tool of the trade uh, for the developers where they can add the elements in there. Another tool you can use is uh, Microsoft DevOps. Let's see. Where is it? Huh, funny. It did not came up right away. Oh, DevOps, Azure DevOps Services. That must be the guy. 
There we go. So another one you can use. So GitHub is one of them. I already closed GitHub. <laughs> GitHub is one of them. The other one is Azure DevOps. What's interesting about Azure DevOps is uh, Azure DevOps is the Microsoft uh, Microsoft's evolution of the um, previous technology like uh, Team Foundation Service TFS that people used to use when the cloud was not a thing yet. <laughs> So when the cloud became, I think it became uh, a VSTS, Visual Studio Team Service, up in the cloud, and then it became Azure DevOps. In a way, Azure DevOps does the same thing that GitHub does. So I'm rather that's kind of a confusing. You know, GitHub is Microsoft, Azure DevOps is Microsoft, and they do the same thing. So is Microsoft competing against each other? Um, in a way, uh, yes, because they used to be apart, but now they are blending. And uh, companies may adopt Azure DevOps because they've been using DevOps for Microsoft, uh, for Microsoft technologies for a very long time, or they can be converging into GitHub, which is a way larger uh, service, uh, especially on the open source environment, where you can find way more elements in there from the, from the community. Um, a lot of... Uh, in my opinion, Azure DevOps is way more mature, that has more features, especially to control the whole DevOps process than GitHub does. GitHub is, get, is catching up, it's getting better and better. And Microsoft has expressed that it's giving a lot of investment, it's getting a lot of attention to mature GitHub. So you can, for the, as the tool of the trades for DevOps, you can use either uh, Azure DevOps or you can use uh, GitHub. Which one you use is your option, right? It depends on the flavor you like better, uh, how you want to implement it better, uh, you know, the visual of the elements and the features of the elements. Uh, in my opinion, DevOps has a way better um, user interface, while GitHub is more into coding and so on. Um, so that is for the repo. But like I mentioned, these two services, let me go back to GitHub here in another tab, GitHub. These two services, both Azure DevOps and GitHub, they uh, uh, they do more than just um, they do more than just store your code into the repo. They offer uh, features to automate both the CD in test, the continuous delivery, as well as the continuous integration to production. Um, and this, uh, in, on the GitHub side, this uh, one of the elements we use for that is called GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions is the GitHub way to for you to implement how things move from stage to stage, right? From uh, when someone pushes something into the Git, into the repo, how that uh, new feature from the developer moves from the repo into the test environment. Uh, and once tested, uh, what are your flags to say that it goes uh, from test into, uh, into production? So GitHub Actions, they integrate into the environment in this way, right? The uh, pushing, like let's say it's action. So they push things from place to place depending on how you code this. So this is all by coding. You go into uh, Azure Dev uh, into <laughs> GitHub. You go into GitHub and work inside GitHub. You create your code in there. You create your actions in there. Uh, the action itself, and let me see here, it, 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 the, the design of the action goes like this, right? You listen to an event and you create a job um, for that event, something to happen when that event uh, occurs. And the event is like the developer just checked in uh, a new code, right? So let's move into test uh, to see if that code uh, is good to go for production. So you get a job and everything you got to do into the to test that one is described into steps inside that job. And these steps, uh, they, uh, they have their specific actions, the specific processing that needs to be done for that step to happen. So this is the, uh, this is the structure of GitHub Actions on the GitHub side. On the Azure DevOps side, what you have, I don't have a slide for that, but on the Azure DevOps side, what you have is the pipelines. So you create a pipeline in Azure DevOps to do kind of the same things, pretty much the same idea, but you define the pipeline and what are the, 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 the steps inside the pipeline that needs to happen, like we have in here, the steps inside the pipeline. 
uh, to push data, to compile elements, to uh, move assets from server to server. Um, and depending on what you're doing, you're going to have a lot of extensions there to work on a particular uh, platform, like a database or uh, a Java environment or you know Python environment for code that you're deploying uh, or that .NET environment and infrastructure and all of that. So GitHub, let me go back one here. So why we use uh, the, uh, uh, ID, an IDE in here, like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and some Git support to get our code in here. On these three areas in here, we use some uh, cloud service. Again, can be on-premise. There are, there are options for these things to run on-premise, but usually a cloud service to do all the automation to get into the cloud. Even if your final deployment is to on-premise, you can have that uh, working uh, up in the cloud. To wrap this up, uh, to wrap this up back here to the browser, there is a workshop that you may want to try on your own later on this particular uh, site here from GitHub. See, Azure DevOps. Look at this logo here. This is super cool. This makes makes drives my point just perfectly. This is an Azure DevOps Labs, meaning this is something for you to try from Microsoft, from Azure DevOps environment, which creates an integration with uh, GitHub. So this particular workshop here is to use these two tools of the trade, like uh, you, you are either a DevOps, Azure DevOps or GitHub, and you may be working on an environment, your company, um, you know, blended with other companies somehow, got acquired, emerged, whatever happens, or you're working on a new project from your company that will work with a partner that uh, use uh, DevOps and you use GitHub or the other way around. So you need these two guys to work together. This particular workshop here um, is to uh, give you some experience on how these things can, can happen. Right, how uh, the Azure DevOps and GitHub can work together, and you're gonna go over some uh, uh, through some steps in here, which I will not do today, just because of time, and um, you know this the, the whole thing here is scheduled to take about an, about 90 minutes. Uh, I have uh, I have done this before with a group of people. It took a little longer than that, half a day actually. But uh, but it's fun, right? You can come in here and check out the, all, all the step-by-step -step sign here. And as you can see, they're using Visual Studio Code uh, in here uh, for, the for the code development and the CI CD integration. So all these things we have uh, we have discussed, you can have some hands-on uh, uh, experience using this particular uh, site in here. So I'm going to get this link. Uh, to you, are gonna uh, ask uh, for uh, for us to put that link there for you guys. For us, to just put the link in our back channel here. So, if you wanna share with our uh, our folks uh, watching the the session, that would be great. And um, and I highly, highly, highly uh, invite you to come to, uh, to come in, uh, checking this later. You know, spend some time. You don't have to spend a dime to do this, right? You can sign up for Azure DevOps and GitHub for free. Uh, Azure DevOps is a paid service primarily, but you can use some features of it, and these ones can be used for free in there. You have a time period; you don't have to to pay for the thing. And all the features here can be used for free, and this should take no more than a day for you to to check it out. So that's it for me today. Uh, I hope you have learned something new and you have uh, kind of a pinpoint the major elements. What are the competitors, by the way? You know, there are a lot of uh, Jenkins implements these things in here, right? So instead of Azure DevOps and uh, GitHub, you could be using Jenkins for the automation of your pipeline, right? The deployment of your pipeline. Your repo will still be GitHub, for instance, or some of Git repository, or even another, another one. And Jenkins could be your tool of the trade <laughs> for, for uh, implementing the CI, CD, the DevOps. There are, more, there are many other tools out there. Uh, on this session, I'm trying to introduce to you, I tried to introduce to you the tools you have from Microsoft and from the Microsoft shop. So I hope you have enjoyed. I hope we have learned something new. And I see you out there on the, uh, on the uh, uh, social network, <laughs> on LinkedIn, if you decide to connect. And I give it back to you for us. 
Thank you so much, Armando. Uh, we appreciate it as uh, usual uh, for everyone else. Thanks a lot for joining. Um, please, uh, if you have uh, uh, some time, we'd really like to hear your feedback on how this event went. Please use the code 15888. Thank you so much. And uh, again, thanks, Armando. My pleasure. See you next time.